Do you realize that you are part of a story much larger and further reaching than your life alone? The God who loves you with an everlasting love is writing a grand story in this world, a story that flows from his heart to bless all nations, and he's inviting you to be part of his story. As we celebrate Jesus' first coming into this world, our Advent Conspiracy Giving Campaign is a reminder to worship fully, spend less, give more, and love all. We've prayerfully chosen five strategic projects for our global partners who are bringing the love of Jesus around the world. A new home in Mozambique, an English center in Middle East, North Africa, a school in the Congo, the Milwaukee House of Prayer, Royal Family Kids Camp. Through your prayers and your gifts, you can join God in his marvelous work in this world. Pray and consider as an individual or as a family what you would like to give. Stop by the Advent Conspiracy display here in our upper lobby to chat with members of our missions team and learn more about ways to pray and get involved. 
As a church, we're so committed to furthering God's story that all gifts on Christmas Eve, unless otherwise marked, will go towards these special Advent conspiracy projects. Place your gift in any of the offering boxes around the worship center or give online at oakwoodnow.org, choosing the Advent Conspiracy drop-down. Thank you for your powerful prayers for our partners and your generous gifts to God's work. Thank you for worshiping with us this Christmas and for playing an important part in the story Jesus is writing in this world for his glory. story, would you stand and sing with us? fears 
years of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above, while mortals sleep, the angels keep their wives. Of wandering love, oh, morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to men on earth.
have a seat for just a minute. Isaiah 40 says this in verse 3. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. i 
All right, kids, we have a very special opportunity to come and gather at the manger. So if you're a child or a child at heart and you want to come join me up front, we're going to have a very special children's moment. And you can come and use either side of the stage and join me here in front of the manger. As they come, can we clap and thank God for the amazing gift of our children? What a blessing you all are. And you can grab a seat or kneel down right here by the manger with me, friends. Wow, thank you so much for being here to celebrate Jesus and to celebrate Christmas with us. Merry Christmas to all of you. And Merry Christmas, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas out there. Awesome. Hey, bud, thank you. Thank you very much. So I have a question for you, kind of a special story that we're going to be looking at together. It's inspired by the book, The Story of St. Nicholas, More Than Reindeer in a Red Suit, written by Cheryl Oden. And what this book seeks to do is to tell the story of a, a man that lived, a real man named Nicholas, who loved Jesus very much. And from his life, many of the special stories that we tell and we remember around Christmas time came. So this man named Nicholas, he was born about 200 years after Jesus was born, and he inherited a lot of money from his parents. And as a young man, what he decided he was going to do was instead of using all that money on himself, he was going to use it to help other people in need. And so he looked out in his town, in his area, and he started to give special gifts to families that were in need. One story is that he snuck at night and threw some bags of gold through a window that landed in the family's home. And they said, where did this come from? Was this a gift that came from God? And he kept doing this night after night, helping families in need. Some of the stories say that when the children would put their shoes outside to dry, Nicholas would come and he would put coins or he would put food in those shoes to help the families that were in need. And as Nicholas got older, he took a very special trip. This is true. He went to a town called Bethlehem in the Holy Land in Israel. And during his time in Israel visiting Bethlehem, what happened to Bethlehem, everybody? Who was born there? That's right, the birthplace of Jesus. He visited Israel. He went to Bethlehem. He spent a very special time in prayer in the garden tomb where we believe was the empty tomb of Jesus, where many people believe that was the place that was left empty after Jesus rose from the dead, that special site. And there in Israel, he had this experience with Jesus that changed his life forever. And the rest of his life, he said, I'm going to live for Jesus so that other people can know about Jesus' love. He lived in the Roman Empire in a very difficult time. So St. Nicholas actually went to jail for his faith in Jesus. He said, nothing is going to stop me from telling others about the love of Jesus and helping other people in need in his name. Did you know that was part of the story of Christmas, St. Nicholas? Wow. Some say yes and some say no. That is pretty special. There's even more to the story that you and your families can dig into. This is part of the Kids of Courage book series, Moms and Dads and Grandmas and Grandpas, if you'd like to dig into that further. But this Christmas, I would like to talk with you about three things about gifts. Do you know what the greatest gift is that God has ever given you? What do you think the greatest gift is that God has ever given you? Any thoughts? Go ahead. A family. Ooh, that is a beautiful gift, the gift of a family. Thanks for sharing that, bud. A lot of chances. Wow, a lot of chances. Like he gives us forgiveness and more chances. Wow, that's beautiful. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. That's awesome. God gives us the gift of Jesus, doesn't he? And at Christmas time, that's what we celebrate, that Jesus left heaven and he came to earth for us as the most wonderful gift so that we can, yes, have a family here on earth, and we can also have a, a spiritual family. As we trust in Jesus, we become part of God's family. And we can have forgiveness and a second chance as he washes our hearts clean and helps us to follow him, right? And when we trust in Jesus, did you know that he gives you gifts too? He puts gifts in you that he wants you to use in this world to bless others, to help others to know God's love, to help others to know what an amazing gift Jesus is. And the third thing I wanted to tell you about gifts 
is you've heard a little bit about it, but this Christmas season, it is such a special thing here at Oakwood, and many of you have been part of it as your families have been giving, and even as you've been giving. Did you know that the gifts here from Oakwood, the offerings this season, have been going to special projects and special needs all around the world through our Advent Conspiracy giving? And that reminds me of Nicholas, who loved Jesus so much. And he said, my life is going to be about more than just me and my stuff and using my money for myself, but I'm going to give to bless others so that others can know the love of Jesus. And you know what, friends? I believe that there are people just like Nicholas here in this room with me today, people that have amazing gifts, and that's you. And I know you're going to use those gifts to be bright lights in this world for Jesus. All right, on your way down, we have a little special ornament for you that's the shape of a gift. They're different sizes, they're different colors, and what we'd like you to do, if you stop by with me here and grab one of those on your way down, these gifts will remind you, you can put it up on your Christmas tree as a little ornament, or you can put it on your um, bedside at home if you'd like as a reminder of the amazing gift of Jesus and the gifts that Jesus has given you as well. Can we clap one more time, guys, and thank Jesus for the gift of our kids? All right, let's stand up together. We're going to have a little parade and get our gifts. Thank you, everybody. Right down here, Miss Ashley is going to give those to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. An angel came to see Mary. She was doing laundry. And then the angel just appeared and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're gonna have, what? I can't, I can't say good. Mary, you're gonna have a baby. I, you're gonna have a baby and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not gonna have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager and I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms, literally no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem hand that, that you can stay, stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way and they followed. <laughs> when the shepherds were taking care of the sheep. And then they saw angels. The angel said, a new baby is get, getting born who is king of the Jews. The angel were singing. Glorious. And then the shepherds said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out a night. And then the wise men heard about it. And then a star appeared. We should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, and some wipes, and some milk, some <laughs> shoes, some Jordans. Gold, Frank, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's gonna be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby I ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> the new baby is gonna change the world.
Didn't feel like a night any different Than at least a million before Was there any rare expectation Like there was some kind of something in store Did the sky have to hold back the thunder Did the moon find her reasons to glow Could the children somehow sense the wonder Two thousand Decembers ago Were the sheep as amazed as the shepherds At the new star that lit up the sky Did the willow trees whisper excitement To the rivers and streams passing by Did the joy ricochet off the mountains Till it filled up the valleys below Did all the world sense love abounding Two thousand Decembers ago Was anyone able to look at the stable And not see a child but a king I wish I could hear back over the years as heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing. Did the walls of the barn start to tremble with a glory they could not contain? Did anyone awake with the feeling Of peace that they could not explain Oh, the love must have been overwhelming As it warmed everyone in its flow For all of the earth is still telling Of two thousand Decembers ago I wish I could hear back over the years as heaven and nature sing. Was anyone able to look at the stable and not see a child but a king? I wish I could. Oh, the love must have been overwhelming Two thousand Decembers ago Shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. An angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. Fear not, said he, for mighty dread has seized their troubled minds. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. To you in David's town this day is born of David's line the Savior who is Christ. Shall be the sign, the heavenly baby. 
from God to man begin and never
in just a few moments, we're going to light our candles. But before we light our candles, I'm going to share a little bit about why we light our candles on Christmas Eve. And I'd like to begin by reading part of the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. And in that same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Well, let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, and they found the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that they'd been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. You know, when I read that story and it says that the angel said, this is going to be the sign for you. This is how you're going to know that you have found the very son of God. This is going to be the sign that's going to make it very clear to you that you have found the one who has come to save the world. The promised one. The sign is going to be, you're going to find a baby wrapped in rags in a manger. And you're going to know that's God. You're going to know that's Emmanuel. You're going to know that's Messiah. You're going to know that's Savior. How on earth is that a sign that someone has found the Messiah. Well, let me tell you, I think God does everything for a reason, you understand? Many scholars believe that these shepherds weren't just normal shepherds. Many scholars feel that these shepherds were actually temple shepherds. What that means is they were the ones who guarded the sheep who were to be the sheep that were to be the sacrifice at Passover. And for a lamb to be sacrificed, it had to be pure, spotless, without blemish, which meant that those shepherds not only cared for those, their flocks, but they also had to inspect their flocks very carefully, especially the lambs that would be used for the sacrifice. And those shepherds literally would take the lamb, the newborn lamb, and clean it off and wrap it in swaddling so that it couldn't be harmed, so that it would be without blemish. And they would take that baby lamb and place it in the manger close by. And there, they would inspect it thoroughly to know that the lamb was spotless, able to be the sacrifice. Do you see? And so for those shepherds to hear the angel say, this will be the sign. And you notice it says, this will be the sign for you. They would get it immediately. That when they would see a baby wrapped in rags, lying in a manger, 
immediately the picture of sacrifice. The one who is worthy. The only one who could take away the sin of the world. I think it's not only significant that he was in a manger, but also the fact that it says, and by the way, we quote it a lot of different ways. We say swaddling clothes, swaddling and swaddling cloths, and some of your translations will say swaddling strips, much like rags that that baby was wrapped in and put in that manger. I don't know if you realize it, but 33 years later, that holy spotless son of God was wrapped in rags again. And it's the very same words. God was testifying to those shepherds. God was testifying to all that would hear that his son came to die. That the message was very clear from the very first placement of him in the manger and the wrapping him in the swaddling that God had come to die for the sins of humanity. He had sent his only begotten son. You know, and for what it's worth, and I just read this yesterday, I thought it was so cool. Many scholars think, you know, you know what they, the, the Bible says there was no place for them in the inn. And so honestly, just to be candid, we don't know exactly where it happened. We don't know if it's in a house, in a barn, in a stable. It doesn't really say it. It just says where it didn't happen. <laughs> Do you understand? But if he were born in a stable, most stables were caves. And it's especially for shepherds who were out in their fields by night would look for a cave to shelter the sheep when they needed shelter. So I just want you to think about this. It's very possible not only was this Jesus placed in a manger wrapped in rags, but he was placed in a cave as he was presented to us as the Son of God. And then 33 years later, wrapped again and put in a cave where he burst forth the resurrected one who confirmed by that resurrection he was everything God promised he would be for us. So what did those shepherds do with that information? <laughs> What's it say? Why, they went and told everybody. They went and told everybody what they'd seen and heard because they got it that it was good news of great joy, which was for all the people. So they wanted everybody to hear. You know what I've been praying this Christmas? I've been praying that the church of Jesus Christ would have the heart of the shepherds to proclaim the good news of Jesus. So that's why we like candles. Because candles remind us that Jesus, the light of the world, said to us, we are now the bearers of that light to the world. And those shepherds, they were faithful to bear that light. And so the cool thing about what's going to happen here today is I'm lighting my candle from the Christ candle that reminds us that our light comes only from the true light Jesus Christ, he is that light. He is our source of life. And so as I'll start the fires going, I want you to remember this. That ultimately, every candle is going to lit in this place, but every candle in this place will find its origin from the Christ candle because he is our life. Let's stand together as we sing Silent Night.
seems so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. So go forth and let your light shine so that others will know the good news of great joy of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Merry Christmas. <laughs>